Hi there. This is Dr. Enson Russia. We want to welcome you to this year's Catalyst. This is Catalyst 2021. Uh, we decided to be a virtual this year, knowing the pandemic in which we are in. So we are so excited uh, to be with you uh, this day, Friday and Saturday. It's going to be an exciting time. We have a very good menu prepared for you. We have wonderful men uh, that are going to be able to speak together with Dr. Mkwaila, um, who is the executive pastor at the International Christian Assembly. We have Dr. Felix Nika and we have Bishop Adebayo uh, going to give uh, some, some wisdom on the theme that we've entitled being responsible. So you are very welcome as you uh, tune in, as you register, and as you work together with us. Today, I want to kickstart it uh, with uh, uh, you know, a message that I have entitled, or a teaching I've entitled, Sharpening the Arenas of Your Responsibility. Sharpening the aren Arenas of Your Responsibility. And I'm going to talk about actually three sets of things. I'm going to talk about six arenas of responsibility, and then I'll talk about quickly on the fulcrum Around, uh, uh, along which these arenas, you know, rotate. And then finally, I'm going to talk about the capacities of uh, uh, these arenas of responsibility. So six arenas of responsibility that needs to be sharpened. And then we'll talk about the fulcrum around which they rotate. And then the capacity, the strength, the abilities that in how we can be able to uh, make these uh, arenas of responsibility, you know, perform properly. Now, what is responsibility? Responsibility is the, really the cornerstone of human existence. Responsibility is the cornerstone of human responsibility. Every one of us, we exist and uh, we live, uh, we develop, uh, and we flourish around this essence of responsibility. Every human being uh, lives and exists around this responsibility. What is responsibility? Responsibility is an obligation one holds. Uh, you know, a state of being accountable for your ability and your action. Responsibility is the obligation we hold. Every one of us, we have uh, some form of obligation that we have. Every human being has a form of obligation. And then this uh, obligation needs to be accounted for. That's what responsibility is. You have an obligation to deliver and become accountable for your action and for your ability. Really, uh, when you look at the word responsibility, it is made out of two words. If you were to take the, the word responsibility and unpack it, or you broke it, it is made out of two words. And the two words are responsible, or response and able. Response and able. So the ability to respond. The ability to respond. Response and able. So response ability. So ability to respond to stimuli. Responsibility or the ability to respond to some action that is demanded of you. That's what response it is. So really, uh, and I would want to submit that this is the cornerstone to all human life. Our development, our existence, our flourishing, our enjoyment is really centered on this issue of responsibility. If we can't handle it properly, then our life, our existence, our development, our flourishing in life is uh, broken. Men, women, all over the world, they only develop, you know, in proportion to their ability of responding or, or their ability to be responsible. I would want to immediately begin by stating that this ability to respond is the gift of God. This ability to respond uh, by human beings uh, is the gift of God. Why do I say so? Because when God made human beings, he gave human beings freedoms. Well, 
at least two freedoms. If you do remember the story of the uh, Garden of Eden, you will find that God placed men in the Garden of Eden, a place of comfort, a place of luxury, and he told them uh, to eat of two, or rather to eat of one fruit from a tree and not to eat one fruit from a tree. He told them not to eat from the tree that was called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But he told them to eat of the fruit of life. You should read in the scriptures in Genesis. But uh, that is the essence of freedom. He gave them freedom. That is a freedom of, uh, of, of choice. Freedom that is called a free moral agency. Every human being has got this uh, freedom embedded within them. That is actually the cornerstone of what we call human rights because God gave these human rights to everyone. But I want you also to notice that within these same human rights or this freedom that God gave is embedded the ability to account for, the ability to follow through with what God has demanded. If you have uh, the freedom, you also have to account for any consequence that comes thereafter. You can't enjoy the freedom without being accountable. So God gave human beings the freedom to choose. They were to choose not to eat of the tree of, of good and evil, or to eat it, but they were also to eat of the tree of life. But contrary to uh, them pursuing what God desired, they ate of the tree of the good of knowledge and evil. And with that choice, they went against God. They sinned against God. With that choice, they created sin in their own lives. That choice made them to become trespassers against what God desired. God never wanted to make robots. He wanted them to choose, and they chose uh, against what God desired for them. That is uh, the essence of responsibility. It is two sides of the same coin. On one coin is freedoms, the right to choose. On the other side of the coin is, you know, being accountable for your consequences, for whatever you choose. So you have the freedom to choose, but you have to account count for the consequences that come. That is the essence of freedom. So freedom really, rather responsibility, is you having, you know, uh, an ability to account for your choices. And there are consequences. There are good consequences. There are bad consequences. That's the reason I have emphasized that responsibility is a cornerstone of human existence. Responsibility is a cornerstone of human development. It is out of there that we choose which is the right direction and which is the wrong direction. It is out of the responsibility that we can flourish, that we can develop, we can enjoy life. Responsibility is a powerful thing. So this year we decided in this uh, catalyst that we should choose the theme being responsible. I want to talk about six arenas of responsibilities, and I want to uh, set them into two sections. The first three really are the ones that are a gracious endowment, a gracious bestowment to human beings by God through the creation. So those three are essentially found in Genesis chapter number one, two, three, the first three. And then I'm going to talk about also, you know, the other uh, uh, three that have to do with, uh, you know, how we relate to community. So the first three is our personal uh, responsibility, while the other set of three uh, responsibilities have to do with community. So those are the six uh, sets of uh, uh, arenas of responsibility I want to talk about quickly. So... In, if you look into the uh, book of Genesis, you will come to realize that God uh, created human beings and bestowed on them, you know, capacities, abilities to do things, abilities to accomplish things, 
And uh, out of those uh, capacities, I want you to see three responsibilities. In these first three arenas, it is to do with uh, the personal responsibility. There are three. The first one is the responsibility out of our created abilities. There are some things that I would refer to as our creation mandate and our identity mandate. Then you will also see another set of responsibility. And now God would want us to reach out uh, to others. And then the third one is a responsibility on cultivating on our assignments. So let me pull those three together. The very first one is that uh, the responsibilities of our creation mandate. What do I mean? In Genesis chapter number 1, verse 26, 27, and 28, God cre- uh, the scriptures clearly shows that God created human beings, male and female, and gave them the ability, in verse 28, it clearly says, he gave them the ability to subdue, the ability to dominate, the ability to be fruitful. That is the ability that God gave them. That is the mandate or the responsibility that God wanted them to subdue, to dominate, to be fruitful while they are in this earth. That's a responsibility of human being. That is an arena of responsibility each and every human being is supposed to carry with burden upon them that they are here on this earth to subdue, to dominate, to, you know, to be fruitful in this earth, to be fruitful in the things that God has given them to be. Now, I want you to notice that is also called a royal mandate, that um, uh, human beings are supposed to dominate in this earth, and some people have called it a royal mandate. You and I are given the ability, are given the capacity to dominate, to subdue, and to be fruitful. Now, because of that capacity, you are responsible to account for that ability. You remember responsibility is ability to respond and, you know, being accountable for your abilities, for your actions. You and I were told or were created to subdue, uh, to dominate, to be fruitful. So by that capacity, you and I are supposed to bring peace to the earth, are supposed to bring peace out of chaos. Wherever we are, human beings are supposed to be people that dominate and bring peace to chaos. They're the ones that are supposed to uh, subdue and bring clarity where confusion is. So wherever human beings are, it doesn't matter the gender, whether female or male. Verse 26 clearly says that. He made them both male and female. He made them Adam. He made them man. But in man, there's male and female. And he says they are supposed to dominate. They're supposed to subdue. They're supposed to be fruitful. So you have the capacity that wherever there's chaos, you need to bring in peace. Wherever there is confusion, you need to bring in clarity. Wherever there is barrenness, you need to bring in fruitfulness. That is the responsibility you and I have in this earth. But there's also another responsibility, the mandate that comes out of the, you know, uh, the, uh, the text of Genesis. You find this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. This is called the Edenic mandate by some scholars. What does it mean? In this one, the Bible says, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. To work it and keep it. What does it mean? It is to steward the earth. Steward the earth. Steward the earth. It means human beings are managers of the resources of this earth. They have the capacity to manage the earth. They have the responsibility to manage the earth. That is a responsibility that we have. Now, I began by saying uh, responsibility is the cornerstone for our existence. Responsibility is a cornerstone for our development and flourishing. So you can see that when God 
tells uh, human beings in Genesis chapter number 3, verse 15, to take care of the earth, to till it, and to keep it. He's talking about stewardship. He's talking about managing. He's talking about tendering it. He's talking about holding it dearly that it is not destroyed. That is the responsibility human beings have. Now, those two aspects are still the creation and uh, the Edenic mandate. They are one arena's arena of responsibility you and I must account for. You are supposed to dominate, you are supposed uh, you know, to subdue, you are supposed to be fruitful, and you are supposed to be a steward of God's resources. So ask yourself, are you that? Every human being is supposed to do that. Unfortunately, that human beings, we tend to be careless with the resources God has given us. The rivers and the forests and the, and the land, wherever we are, we, we pollute it, we destroy it. We are no longer stewards of the earth. You know, uh, the level of uh, development of humanity is also equal to how humanity takes care of the earth. You are responsible. And we should not be Africans, sometimes we are so careless about the resources we, we have. We tend to think somebody from the northern hemisphere should come and take care of our rivers. Rivers around our towns, such as Lingard's River, uh, such as uh, Lilongwe River. Uh, we are supposed to take care of these rivers and the resources that God has given us. Our lake is supposed to be taken care of for us who are in Malawi. For all of us in Africa, we are supposed to take about, uh, care of our resources, natural resources God has given us. It is our responsibility. The second arena of our responsibility is what uh, is commonly called the Missio Dei Mandate. Missio Dei Mandate. It's a Latin word that talks about the mission of God. Because what happened that after God created Adam and Eve, they decided to use their freedom wrongly, and they chose, and they went against God, and God, you know, punched them. But in choosing their own way, they created sin in themselves, which made a separation between God and human beings. And ever since, human beings have been separated from God. But God, in his wisdom and in his care, he had already thought of a way. Revelation chapter 13 uh, verse 8 clearly says that God had already set a plan, set a solution for us, and that was Jesus Christ dying as a lamb before the foundation was made. You can be able to, to read that. That's a powerful thought, that God had already thought of a plan even before Adam and Eve fell. God had already thought of a plan. And the plan was, I will send my son to die for them. Now, in sending Jesus Christ to die for us and those who receive him as Lord and Savior, we also, you know, become responsible to tell others about Jesus Christ. That is called the mission of God responsibility. The responsibility of sending and telling others about the love and the care of Jesus Christ. That's the third arena of responsibility. Every human being, the first, is they have the mandate based on their being created in the image and in the likeness of God, that they are supposed to subdue, they are supposed to dominate, they're supposed to be fruitful in this earth, and they're supposed to take care of this earth and its own natural resources. That's the first mandate, first responsibility. But the second area of responsibility is mission day, that God sent Jesus Christ to come and die for sinners like you, like me. And then when we are reconciled back to him, he also passes on this responsibility of telling others about Jesus Christ. That's one of the most powerful responsibilities every human being can have, is to walk alongside God be a core minister, core worker with God, and take on the responsibility of telling others about this God who loves us so much, who cares for us so much. The third arena of responsibility is the arena of our assignments. The arena of our assignments. That's the third arena 
of our responsibility. Now, this is critical because every human being who is uh, created and made into this earth, they have one unique assignment to fulfill. Every human being has got a destiny to fulfill, has got a life mandate, a life purpose. Every one of us is unique. Every one of us is special. You are special. You are not sent into this earth to be a duplicate of another person. No, you are special. You are, you are uniquely set. The Bible is so clear in Psalm 139 that he created us, he crafted us so special that his thoughts about us are so unique. There are so many that we are so different from each and every one of us. Even identical people, identical twins, are never 100% identical because they are uniquely framed and uniquely set to fulfill a specific destiny in this earth. So it is important for you to take time to explore about the uniqueness that you have. It is a special arena of your responsibility. You are responsible to understand who you are. Understand what you have. Understand the uniqueness about you. How do you come to, to that place? Really, it's a place of exploration. Discovering your life personal assignment may be so overwhelming, but it's at the same time so exciting. Through your life journey, as you go about your business, as you go about what you need to do in life, you come to realize some things that are specifically and especially so uniquely yours. So uniquely yours. You know, I am Enson Rose. I, by the grace of God, I'm married to Christine, and we have a son. We named him Enson Rose. To differentiate him from me, we called him Enson II. Uh, he has a similar name, but he's totally different from me. He may have a different, even... A persuasion to follow the career like I have, but you will be totally different from me. Every one of us is uniquely special. Yeah. Even those you think they are poor, even those you think they are not fit to be in this earth, which is a, a deplorable thought already in that regard, even those you think they have no capacity to do anything, Imagine people that are disabled. Imagine people that uh, may not have ability, uh, visual ability or, uh, you know, uh, uh, mobile ability to walk with, with their legs or with, to hear properly. Everyone is special. And everyone was sent in this earth with an assignment. You are sent in this earth with an assignment. You have a destiny. That is your arena of your responsibility. You are responsible to take care of that arena, sharpen it, refocus it, so that you become aware of what you are uniquely set to come and do in this earth. That's what you are supposed to do. Why is it so? Because a lot of us, we tend to look across the fence to look at what others are doing when we forget about our assignment. That which we are supposed to be doing in this earth. God has sent those, you know, abilities within us, and we must account for those abilities. And if we don't use those abilities, if we don't respond properly, we are guilty of any consequence that we receive for non-performance in that area. Those are the first three uh, sets of arenas of our responsibilities. I want to talk about the second three sets. The first were personal, and they are out of the gracious bestowment of God, what God has put upon us by creating us in his image and creating us under his likeness. He deposited some things within us to make us be able to respond, to have the ability to do something in this earth. Now, the other three sets of responsibility have to do with our community our people around, and they are set in the sense of organization, organization. 
organization. There are three sets of this responsibility. If you are part of an organization, part of a community, as a country, or as uh, a community, whatever it is, it could be Bank Mkonde, yes. It could be, you know, a cooperative, yes. It could be in a country. Uh, it could be a, a school. It could be a university. Whatever it is, there are three major responsibilities every one of us in that community has. The first one is, you know, a very clear strategy strategic visionary development of the th organization, of the community, of the nation, whatever we are involved in. Because our responsibility brings impact and influence wherever we are. Responsibility brings impact in ourselves as a person, the first three sets. Now I'm talking about the responsibility that brings impact and influence in a community, three sets. The first one, which we can regard as a fourth, is that uh, we have to have a strategic vision of development. Every organization must be aware of the direction or the vision they are going. So the leaders in that organization must emphasize the visionary development, the visionary direction of the organization. That is important. Leaders, you as a leader, you must be clear about the direction of the organization. You, as leaders in the political arena, we must be clear about the direction of the nation. You, as you know, administrators in that uh, school, in that bank, in that cooperative, you must be very clear about the visionary direction of the organization that you lead. That's the fourth arena of responsibility. If the organization, if the community is not very pointed and focused, it tends to be vague in its performance. Visionary development, visionary direction. The uh, fifth arena of responsibility is you know, uh, the responsibility of executing the plans of a community. Yes, to have a vision is great. To speak of the greater future is great. To speak of, uh, of the dreams and of, uh, of the direction you are going to is very inspirational and very great. But vision without implementation is useless. We need to understand that. Vision without implementation is useless. So the fifth arena of responsibility is implementation. We are responsible to implement the dreams, the plans that we have for the organization, for the nation. I come from Malawi. We've had a wonderful and glorious, uh, you know, four or five years of roller uh, coasting and up and down valley and mountain, uh, you know, uh, uh, experiences. We, we've gone in the valley where we think our nation is splitting into pieces and uh, we've come to a place of also getting excited because you know our political ambition and our democratic you know direction seem to be forged in one direction. There's been excitement because we went through a change of government and change of ideals. But do you know what? This change of government and these uh, wonderful manifestos people talked about on the campaign trail will never mean anything if there is no implementation. Those dreams will never mean anything. Malawi will never become anything. Africa will never become anything until we start implementing the dreams and the plans that we've talked about, that we've dreamed until those things that are on paper start having legs to walk, until those things that are on paper start you know, having a voice to speak, until those things that are on paper start moving places, we implement, we execute those things. That is the fifth arena of responsibility. And it's the most difficult arena of responsibility because ordinarily every one of us we want to, to take a laid-back posture. 
We want to lie down. We want to laze around. We don't want to execute. We don't want to be in the forefront of rolling our, our sleeves and taking a hard work uh, uh, posture. But you know what? Development will never come. This existence I'm talking about will never continue to flourish if we don't implement, if we don't execute those plans, those ideals, those dreams that we have. You could have been a person who every year brings out resolutions, yearly resolutions. I want to be this. I want to become this. I want to achieve this. You know what? Those do not leap off the page until we implement them. They do not become a building until we implement them. The plans that you have for a company, they do not become a company until we implement them. You have to hustle. You have to work hard. You have to wake up early in the morning. <laughs> That's what it is, responsibility to act, to implement. The fifth, or rather the sixth arena of responsibility, and the last one for this presentation, before I go into the second phase, which are really shorter phases, is the ability to develop others into leaders. It is called leader development. Leader development. Leader development is an, uh, you know, an ability that stands on the awareness that your ability is not eternal. Your leadership is not eternal. My leadership is not forever. Whatever I do in an organization is never forever. Therefore, I must be aware that I must pass on that which I have grown to become, that which I have understood, the wisdom I've gleaned on my journey, I have to pass it on to others. I have to uh, allow others to glean so that they can lead and direct and take the community, the nation, the organization to the next level of its greatness. That's what it is. So you and I have a responsibility to develop others. We have a responsibility to coach, mentor, develop, sponsor others into greatness. You and I, after having done everything that we must do, you must be responsible to coach others, to lift up, to make others become the best they can by emphasizing on their assignment, emphasizing on their capacity, emphasizing on their abilities. You and I have a responsibility to improve the effectiveness of others. So six arenas of responsibility. Number one, the creation mandate. I have the responsibility to uh, subdue, dominate, be fruitful in this earth, and be a steward of the thing, of the resources of God in this earth. Genesis chapter number one, verse 26 to verse 28. And chapter 3, verse 15. The second one is that I have the responsibility to communicate miss your day into the earth. What is miss your day? The mission of God. That men, human beings, men and female, they fell from the presence of God, from the righteousness of God. Now they are supposed to be laid and directed to back to God. And you who has come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have the capacity and the ability and the responsibility to lead others to God. The third uh, arena of our responsibility is in our assignment. Each and every one of us have been endowed with the graciousness of God. There is a destiny that you are supposed to fulfill. Every one of us have, you know, a, a life mandate, a, pers a per personal purpose, to fulfill in this earth. Every one of us, you and I, are, are not an accident in this earth. We are intentional and uniquely sent into this earth. Those three first arenas of uh, responsibility are personal for every one of us. But then there are three others that are uniquely for community. Number one is that we should be able to drive the visionary development of a company, of an organization, of a community, of a family, of a nation, wherever God has placed us, he wants us to be about driving the vision and mandate. But 
the sixth one, or rather the fifth one, is that we must be responsible to execute the plans, the dreams, the ideals of what we believe God has placed in our community. And finally, finally, on these arenas of uh, responsibility is that every one of us must be aware that we are not eternal in our physical state where we are. We are not a forever being. The ideals, the wisdom, the knowledge, the skills that we have developed, we must pass on to others so that they can be able to lead the communities into their greatness. If you're a politician, you will have to develop other politicians. If you are you know, a great leader, you must pass on the leadership to others. You must pass on through coaching and mentoring, through sponsoring, through a proper you know, investment and bestowment into others. Be a benefactor to other people that can enjoy blessing from you. Those are six arenas of responsibility. But these are so useless and they have no power. These arenas have no power to generate any development, any excitement in the earth until we go through a fulcrum of these arenas. I call this a fulcrum or, you know, an arena where they rotate to bring success. And this fulcrum really is that we must be determined. We must be determined, uh, have determined action. Nothing will happen if there is no informed action. So if you are going to be a, a great leader, you are going to respond when there is information. So informed action is what is always uh, critical for us to be responsible people. Informed action is critical. How do we become responsible people? How do we foster you know, influence and impact? We do it through being responsible. But being responsible is vague if we have no action. So we have to have determination <clears throat> and courage to make informed choices informed decisions, informed judgments. These arenas of responsibilities, they will never produce anything worthwhile for human beings if we do not have informed action. Determined informed action that makes us make great choices, great decisions, great judgments. And we should be able to be accountable for the consequences that come out of those actions we make. So that's a four crop. So you have to pray every time, Lord, give me the courage. Lord, give me the information so that I can make informed action. I can make informed action. Always you have to do that. So I've talked about six sets of arenas of success. I've talked about the four crop, the most important arena where these rotate. But finally, four capacities, capacities, cap capacities that gives us the courage to act. Four capacities. And quickly, I'm not going to labor this. Number one is your character. Your character, your inbuilt behavior, uh, what you are in the dark. Really, uh, integrity is the simplest uh, word we can use for character. And integrity means wholeness, internness totality, completeness, honesty, transparency. Your character is your capacity for your responsibility. If you've got a great character, if you're a person of good character, you are able to have the capacity to act, to have this informed action. Number two, skills. Every one of us, we have to develop our skills. Skills, abilities, gifts, are the arenas through which we respond. A lot of people don't respond adequately to things in their lives because they have never built skills, they have never built abilities, they don't have gifts in those arenas, so they cannot act adequately or favorably. So if you've got a dream, it is important to develop skills and abilities and gifts in that arena. 
The third arena of uh, capacity is knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge and wisdom. A lot of us, we don't act well because we are misinformed. We are not knowledgeable. We do not have the wisdom to do it. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Knowledge is really is pieces of information about things, about our life, about nature, about uh, our world, about our culture. Well, wisdom is the application of that knowledge. When you come to the T junctions of life, that's what wisdom is. So wisdom is when you are making choices, when you're making decisions, when you are changing destiny, when you are rotating over a judgment, that's when you need wisdom. So every one of us must realize that is the capacity for making uh, great decisions. When we're talking about being responsible people, we must be people of great character, people that have got skills, abilities, and gifts, and people that have got adequate knowledge over the thing that we want to make decision of. And then finally, our experiences. Our experiences are our capacities. What you've gone through gives you lessons to be ready to act in the next arena of your life. Well, this has been a wonderful time being with you uh, in this Catalyst uh, 2021. It's been wonderful. I hope you can be able to share uh, these uh, thoughts that we've shared with you to others. You can pass on uh, this uh, broadcast to others so that together we can become sharpened in our arena of responsibility. God bless you. Shalom from us.